Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Toylands Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Romero, and with me is... Hey, what's up? Hey, Ian. What's going on, Tommy boy? Congratulations, one year we've been doing this. One year we've been boring America with our toy talk. <laughs> yes. Started out first audio, and now it's audio and video, and... Oh yeah, we're the new disease. We spread... <laughs> But anyway, congratulations. congratulations. You've been a great partner in this oh, whole endeavor. Thank you, sir. It's it's all you actually. You do No, I'm just yeah, if there's if there's like I'm just crazy. One percent of work I do, it's probably showing up and no. putting in a negative two cents. But we need you though. That's, that's very kind. Crazy week. Crazy week in, in the world of toys. Everybody's gearing up for a Comic-Con that no one's attending. Especially Marvel and DC. Really? That part's interesting. Yes. Yep. Well, it makes sense now because DC has DC fandom. Marvel, I'm sure, is going to do some Disney thing. Yeah, uh-uh. D23 if they have another expo. There you go. But, like, it's good to have their own, but... Do you think so, though? I think it's okay to have their own, but I don't think they should stay away from where they've done it for how many years. It's it's, don't forget where you came from in a way. You know, before this, you shouldn't you shouldn't believe the uh, the fans, right? And 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 expect them. Well, they're not. I don't think they're leaving. I think it's just a whole new different segment you know yeah, they, instead of giving money to comic-con give us your money directly right but you know for the for the people who go to the conventions that's going to be something they're going to miss seeing the dc the marvel booth and in a way well that's you know good that means also like ID, idw or image and dark horse they're just gonna bring in more people to their booths to exactly their booths. so i mean business it's it's kind of like well, i mean i see i see it as a giant flea market at this point yeah. you know i mean people i don't know they're it's not as exciting as it used to be no, it's, it's expensive it's you know it's, you know the the last the conventions I, I, I've enjoyed going to really have been like um, the old Wizard Worlds. Actually, those were the greatest conventions. Never attended one of those, but uh, I did like like the horror conventions and movie yeah. conventions. You know, before Chilla Theater got crazy popular, when it was um the first couple I don't know if it was the first couple of shows, but the first couple of shows I went to it was just like. In these just little buildings, and it was just dealers. You know, mm-hmm. a couple of guests. This is before Chiller was bringing in like all the TV show people now, and you know the cast of Gilligan's Island or whatever. Right. It was just like straight out. I don't want to say low budget, but it was it was just a con. You know, it was it was great. Um, yeah, I can't wait for the toy shows to kick back in. Those haven't really slowed down because. You have um, ToyCon in New Jersey. There's one going on in Tampa right now. And uh, uh, Pixel Dan's over in Indiana right now at a toy convention. So, And then um, PowerCon's coming. What? Yes, thank God. I can't wait. They ch- changed my flight. I was all set to leave in the morning. I was going to make a detour in Disney on Friday just so I can see Avengers Campus. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they threw a monkey wrench in it. So, the Avengers Camp is supposed to be awesome. This Stay tuned. A restaurant. Um, yeah, the pin particles. And then the uh, the Spider Man robot is. Just I can't incredible. wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Um, they said it's and and uh, I won't take up much time, but basically, to create that robot to get from day one to now. It was basically, I know this is a pen, but it was basically a stick that got thrown in the air and landed. And then they took that concept and then worked and created like a Z 
and then that robot that that thing did the, the flip and then that z became a robot um if you want to call it that and then uh you know just more and more they enhanced it until it had the physical appearance of a person in the suit and i believe that it can do different routines not just the same oh wow okay yeah and it, every from what i've seen every time he launches he lands safely in a net on the roof so he goes from one rooftop oh to another, okay but he's landing in a net i mean obviously you've got this million dollar animatronic that you're throwing 50 feet in the air you're gonna want it to land on something yeah as long as it doesn't land on me yeah but uh it's it's incredible looking yeah i can't wait but, uh, so one year thank you to all the listeners supporters new and old that have been listening to us we really appreciate it got some exciting news today at the right before we end the show we're going to announce the cyber frog contest where you can win your own cyber frog action figure look how cool they are but uh, and signed by ethan van skyver himself pretty much just told them what the contest was pretty much now they just need to figure out how to enter that's right and then I forgot to mention these last week, the Transformers, the movie reaction figures from Super 7. You're going to get Galvatron, Crowned Starscream, Ro uh, Hot Rod, prior before he becomes Rodimus Prime. And this one, it's Dead Optimus Prime. I, I know it's a... a big issue with some people myself included um, but it just it looks like it's in poor taste though why why is there an issue because he's dead he okay. died i saw well, i think i was a freshman i was in um i went to a convention with our buddy rich in philly and somebody was selling the migo robin doll okay and um i guess like a comic bag and, and and they they called it the Robin in a body bag toy for like Jason Todd. And oh wow! Really the price on it. Not only that, <laughs> this was in horrible poor taste. There, somebody, this was back in ninety ninety one, was selling the um, autopsy photos of George Reeves. Oh wow! And I was like, you sick mother. Uh, I just didn't think that was right. Why would you want that? I guess you're somebody's gonna flee this on Superman. I, I, I don't know, man. It's just weird, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's the world we live in. Speaking of craziness, did you know that there was gonna be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Masters of the Universe crossover comic? Why wasn't it? I found these pictures on Freddie Williams the second, the artist of said book. He's also done amazing artwork on Batman and Turtles. I believe all three volumes he did. He did also uh, Thundercats, He Man. His so it, are really nice. They're beautiful. I mean, I, I'm sure they you know look great colored and inked, but like it's incredible just what the pencils look like. Right. I'm trying to get him on the show. And it was funny, too, because we discussed this. And he was like, keep it a secret. Don't say anything. Because I want to surprise people weekly on my Instagram. So I was like, all right, yeah, no problem. Yeah, come on the show. You're always welcome. Yeah. The it. very next day, he went on somebody else's podcast and just like, yeah, we were going to do a right. Masters of the Universe. So... Splinter and Sorceress? Yes. Which is an interesting angle of Castle Grayskull. That's in her throne room. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, I knew that. Uh, yeah, I, it's a great rendition. So if you love... Well, who doesn't love He-Man Turtles? Two great tastes together. <laughs> Log on to Freddie Williams II on his Instagram. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, my favorite one, he did a great one where Leonardo has his harness, has He-Man's harness on, mm -hmm. and he's got two power swords. I saw a picture of 
That's one of my favorites. And then there is a great one, and it's kind of kind of goofy looking at the same time. It's Michelangelo as Ram Man because he's got the helmet. Right. His Skeletor Shredder. Comic, yes. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, to see like the skull and Shredder's mask, I was like, "Oh, that's pretty sick." Yeah, a lot of yeah, he did a lot of good stuff. It's, um, well, you know, maybe if this popular enough, you know. Well, apparently, Rob David, who's in charge of the Masters of the Universe Revelation cartoon, along with Kevin Smith, he's the one that put the kibosh on it. Because the show was coming out, or uh, well, it was maybe. But that'd be a dumb way to, yeah. or a dumb reason to cancel, in my opinion. The more, you know, the more you get out there, uh, so you're you're saying you're gonna have He Man team up with the Turtles, and Turtles fans would want to buy the book because of the Turtles. Exactly, that would have been a million dollar book. You would have had people who don't maybe not know about, you know, He Man suddenly reading about him, right? And possibly branching off into you know He Man stuff, but. Instead, yeah, they're you go and cancel the book. They're doing some goofy things over at uh, Mattel right now. One of the goofy things is, is this thing. I hate to interject, but Masters of the Universe Revelations, the comic, recently came out last Wednesday, a prequel to the actual animated series, which will be released on July twenty third on Netflix. I have to say, I wasn't a big fan of this storyline. What was it that you didn't like? I think they're trying to cram too much, and in doing so, they're trying to make it all make sense. And you said this is a four-issue book, right, before we started? Right. Because okay. apparently now Hero and King Grayskull, I guess King Grayskull raised Hero and his son Dare. And then it, it just... The whole story is about this Orlax creature who apparently can poison your mind. Mm. He-Man goes back in time to because someone got poisoned. He-Man goes back in time through a sorceress. And apparently the same thing happened to King Grayskull's son, Dare. He got poisoned as well. A lot of plot holes in this, sh- in this book. The artwork was okay. Now, I've heard a lot of people say... It, Looks like the powerhouse animation. I don't see that at all. I mean, maybe I don't have that trained eye, but that's not the feeling I got with it. But they're trying to cram too much all at the same time. You know, they were like, yeah, we're just like you. We're, we love this. We're fans. That's why we're taking this character and putting it in and that character and putting it. In. And you really don't need to, you know, you, it's not a race, you know. Although some people are saying maybe they want to do it before Universal takes over, if they take over. Who knows? But uh, Universal's taking over He Man. Universal actually owns the right, or DreamWorks actually owns the right rights to Masters of the Universe. Mattel owns the rights to the. I know we've discussed this before. Right. Mattel- Apparently. Um, it's either 2023 or 2024. I think it's 23 now. That, um, yeah, Mattel's going to lose the licensing, or not licensing, but lose the rights to He-Man and Masters of the Universe. Everything? Everything. So they cannot do anything then without going to... DreamWorks. DreamWorks and say, hey, we want to make this toy. You know, we want to license this toy. Or you know, Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of people... Are saying if that does happen, I mean, we could be looking at like a like a Hasbro licensed He Man figure. You could also be looking at. I mean, if it does happen, I'll be honest with you. I would love Brian over at Super Seven to get it back. Well, let's put it this way: How do they not have that happen? Um, basically, just. Petition DreamWorks be like, hey, we want to keep making okay, so they He-Man come toys. Come up, right? So well, it was ridiculous wait, to begin so with for Mattel to sell off those rights anyway. They own it now. Then that's what you're saying. DreamWorks. Flat out. Yep. 
Oh, so they uh, starting in, like I said, either 2023 or so they around that time saying in this year, you will be the full owner. Correct. Of, of this property. Correct. All right. So when I think about it, this could actually be a good thing in a way. Go if it, you know, if Patel has not been living up to the standards of how the fans feel, maybe it's time for somebody else to step in and, yeah, but in their season in fear, you know, we, we all fear change. So it's like, it's like Disney buying Star Wars in a way. That's so, exactly how I was. Yeah, I was about but, to say the same thing. But you also got to think Nickelodeon bought Turtles and while. Which was a mistake. Well, their comic is good. The IDW book is good. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with Nickelodeon. All Nickelodeon did was, yeah, do a comic. Yeah, but it's, I mean. They could have signed it off to like somebody else, you know, the comic. They could. But yeah. Um, for everything Disney has bought, so they bought the Muppets. They really can't seem to reinvent the Muppets. Right. Like reinventing the wheel. Maybe you just can't do it. Um, Star Wars, they have hits and misses. Indiana Jones, um, we'll see. There's um, a lot of stuff has come out in the past. We could do uh, rumor wise, of course, but about the plot of the movie, the the decade it takes place in, and so on. Right. Um, and then um, you look at what they're doing with Marvel, though, and not, like ninety five percent of that's been a hit, and right. probably being conservative, but it's probably I would say maybe a hundred percent. I mean, I don't know if you've been watching Loki, but it's, it's actually mm-hmm. okay. It's actually a good show. I've been enjoying it um, as a fan of. Thor and just Norse mythology. Um, um, they, I think there's one episode left. Uh, oh, I thought it ended already. I was going to watch it in one shot. I hope not, because if it ended the way it ended, then it wasn't really a good ending. Oh, okay. It, there, there was nothing kind of like um, wrapping things up, mm-hmm. like leaving you to your next jump off point in the MCU. Gotcha. Think, it's only been five episodes, I think. So I think there should be at least one more. But I could be wrong. Um, so with that said, uh, Disney's handled the properties they've purchased. Perhaps, you know, DreamWorks has, does have some ideas. Um, then again. Yeah. Then again, we've seen what they did to She-Ra. Right. And I'll just leave it at that. And, and then again, you know, like Spielberg's not really involved, I think, with DreamWorks anymore. And can you imagine Spielberg directing a He-Man movie? I. Be a huge budget. But. He's awesome. I mean, I yeah. think, you know, he would, he would probably do something cool with it. Yeah, I mean, we've already got hit with the changes and revelations, so. Do you remember? I mean, the, it's the, the crapshoot. Yes. Wasn't in the room, the, the, the bedroom, they opened the door, wasn't the He-Man toy in it? Or was it the Incredible? Was it Hulk? Oh, I'm sure. Was it like Hulk writing an Anna? Because if you look at the Princess Bride... My wife's here at movie. Yeah, uh, what, yeah Grizzlor. Grizzlor, He-Man. Captain America figure. Yeah, they were all... Uh, um, those were the Masters figures. Yeah. And then in a Toy Story... Toy Story? Uh, Christmas Story, excuse me. If you notice uh, in the Christmas Story, there's a Transformer uh, on his desk or his bed or something. I think it was like Hot Rod or something. And which movie was this? A Christmas Story. You shoot your eye out? Yes. That takes place in the... Um... Yeah, way before the Transformers came wait, out. Wait, wait. This can't be true. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. If you look close enough, you can find it. All right, next time that's on, I'm going to have to check for that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, kind of crazy. I saw her place. And here's something cool now that we're talking about cartoons. The Silver Hawks. And the Nacelle Company, our friends Brian Volk Weiss and his company that created the Toys That Made Us, and Brian Flynn have teamed up together to create new Silverhawks cartoons or animated series. That dude looks like Abe Lincoln with that beard and his hair. Oh, Steelwell, yeah. Then you get the guy yeah. cowboy hat. He's a football player, apparently. Like Which one's when he. Cowboy? Yeah, no, the um, the Abe Lincoln beard that you said. Yeah, he 
throws on his his face mask and he's got like a little um quarterback like ring quarterback hook interesting yeah yeah i mean it's a great show you know futuristic cyber cops basically that's what they are yeah they gave their life to science so they can be metallic and you know fly around it was a great show i enjoyed it is it an actual kid or is it a monkey the alien kid oh he's an alien okay yeah well he doesn't talk he he talks through a series of whistles okay he's kind of got like a chimpish face yeah but it makes sense if he's an alien okay yeah yeah they used to um believe it or not the ending they would teach you about space i thought that was way more interesting yeah yeah yeah, so the guy with the cowboy hat, bluegrass. Bluegrass. That's the he would, name. yeah, he would, he would put the the kid through like a simulator, right? And you'd learn all about space. The fact that they call him bluegrass, like, and this is back in the eighties, so I don't even know if that type of music was around. I guess it was. Oh, like, I'm sure. Right? They call him that. I mean, his his whole gimmick was he would fly the spaceship and you know act like a cowboy and play on his uh, guitar. His guitar, man, it's like Deliverance in space. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually never that saw the show, so I couldn't really tell you. But what? That was a great like, show. Look at him; he's got the hat and the and the and the scarf around his neck. Does he? Oh yeah. The country accent. Oh, of course. Oh, that's just. That's so messed up. That's He's not a New Yorker. That is the 80s for you. Yep. And then, just as a reminder, Super 7 Silver Hawks Ultimate. I can't talk today. The pre order ends July 11th. So Has hurry there been up. Any word about them going with the automobile paint that, other than what you said? Anyone? No. I really want to see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool. Oh, well, he's another one I'm trying to get on the show, Brian Flynn. I mean, he's always nice to us over at, yes. you know, Toy Fair. Yeah, yeah, so. very, very cool. Uh, I, have to get, really cool I have to get through his uh, his wall of uh, employees just to get to him. I don't get it. We're so friendly, and How come we people... The nicest right? Podcasts. People don't want to hang out with us. I don't know. Nobody likes us. You ever see that Kids in the Hall? Skit. Which one? Oh, it was um Dave Foley and uh, uh, the guy he did the voice of Ludo and Stitch, Ke- uh, Kevin something. Anyway, they're always like, <laughs> nobody likes us. <laughs> they have a suitcase full of worms and they wind up eating the worms. And nobody likes us. I might as well eat some worms. And it's just it's stupid, but it's funny. Awesome. As a matter of fact, since we might as well, you know, announce this. You and I have been invited to the Wizard Podcast. Um, I think I just screwed it. The Wizard Guide to Podcasts or the comic. I'm sorry if I'm magazine butchering guys. it. The Magazine Guys. Yeah, I was on it once before. Great, great guys. Great bunch of guys. What do they do? They go and and review each issue of a Wizard magazine. Each issue of Wizard magazine. What's well, like? About one per month, I guess they do. No, no, they're. They do more than one a month. That's, yeah, that's a lot. That's a yeah, lot. they go, they go through it quick. Plus, they have their, they also interview past wizard employees, which is fun. You get to hear a lot of great stories. I mean, the '90s comic boom that was, that was a great era in comics. In, looking back, I think it has its ups and downs, but like Wizard was definitely a part of it. That was a great magazine for a while. Oh yeah. As much as I wanted to see them go out of business, I, I um... see you and Rob Liefeld. I'll never understand that. Well, you know what it was? I wanted. I felt that they weren't covering enough. I felt they were only covering what was popular. And there's all. No oh yeah, that was a big. Comics. Yeah. Like they should do. A... But they did. They had an indie book also that covered yeah, just I, indie stuff. I wanted to see stuff about like you know the old days and you know Dave Stevens and. You know, um, the um, I tell you one thing though, I did enjoy whenever I'd go on vacation, I would get the, the newest issue of Wizard and I'd save it for the plane ride. Mm. You know, it was like flying down to Florida two hours, just like sipping a Coke and drinking, drinking a Wizard, um, 
reading a wizard and uh it was just a nice way to fly yeah definitely yeah i remember i would say mine for christmas yeah sometimes you know they, they had some pretty good articles and i i always remembered uh, i always enjoyed the envelope art piece when they would show people that was cool art. man that was cool um the uh custom toys they did for a while yeah before toy fair yeah and um i made i remember i made a space ghost out of an animated batman mm-hmm. yeah i would shave down his ears i would paint you know but crappy ass paint and i'm not a customizer in any way shape or form but i took my paintbrush painted him white made his cape yellow and you know the crappiest rendition of that that V symbol that he has of his own face. Right. It was horrible. It was a cool figure, but it was horrible. Yeah, yeah but you know, you did it. It's just one of the cool things, you know, that you can give it a shot. It's... Well, I was a teenager, so I was trying to figure my way in life. I was like, oh, maybe I'm art. And no, not even close. I shouldn't even be talking. <laughs> So yeah, so look for us on or check them out anyway. It's a great podcast, Wizard Guide to Podcast. Yeah. Relive the Wizard Years. Those were good years in comics. Yeah, I mean there was for the whole Spider Man clone thing. Oh my god, that was horrible. I don't know what they were doing. I was just so Well, Howard Mackey. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be a toy podcast, but Howard Mackey there's actually a wizard article where he states he hates Spider-Man. And I was like, well, why are, why are you writing Spider-Man if you hate him? Yeah. Apparently, apparently that's where the clone saga came from. He literally said, I hate Spider-Man. So he was the one who was responsible for that. In the whole years. clone saga. Oh, Lord. I mean, I understand the thing from the, you know, the 60s and the 70s when they first created it. Now, that was a story. Right, and they should have just left it there. Exactly. But then you were going to tell me that all along I've been reading about the clone and really Peter Parker died. Oh, that's... Uh, that was a big... Yeah. You was like, yeah, I don't think so. That actually, one of the times I I stopped reading it, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not giving them my money for this. Yeah. Yep. Let's get into some news. Get into the news. So, Masters of the Universe Origins is still a big hit over at Mattel. According to adultcollector.com, and no, it's not what you think, kids. That's right. They love He-Man over there. But um, they interviewed Mattel, and Mattel's like, yeah, we're Origins is doing great. We're going to keep going with it. Until 2023. Well, you know what? That's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. But... Hey, if you love them, great. You know, to me, it's just vintage with more articulation. Not really for me. Although, I will admit, I did pick out, I cherry-picked my favorites. I have them right here. I think, you know what? That's the way to do it sometimes. Cherry-pick? Yeah, because, I mean, how many times... I mean, unless you're a Star Wars collector, because I know those guys. Like, every version of Luke Skywalker they own. But how many versions of the same character are you going to get? That's the thing. You know, like... Out of a whole franchise or whatever, if you're only collecting one character, then I can see having the right. Differs, or you're buying it really because of the card, the blister pack. It's got different artwork. I get that. Um, or, but even what you're doing, like you just picked up maybe your favorite characters or just exactly Prince Adam or whatever. Um, you know, that, that's great because you're still part of like feel like you're collecting, and but you're also not spending all your money, so it's um. It's a good way to go. It's it's one. Yeah, if I'm, if you know, if that's what you're into, God bless. If you you know that's convenient for you, great. If you want to like have the whole line, it's also great. You know, like, you know, there's no wrong way to collect. Right. Comes down to. Right. And then recently, these pictures got leaked. Masters of the Universe Revelations Faker. It's got a big gash on his face. Yeah, that's cool. They see, it's so weird. Like they make these figures. His head looks like Colossus. Wow. Yeah, everyone keeps saying Terminator, but yeah, I can see yeah, Colossus. Yeah, you know, with the red eyes. But I don't know. They should. 
they should be able to interact with the classics collection. I still think the classics collection is still the greatest line ever for Masters of the Universe. But, but yeah, so this is. I guess we're going to dub him Colossus. Everyone else calls him Terminator. But I do like the fact that um, pieces of skin are actually molded onto the, the metal. onto the metal. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, and some of it's going to come off, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then I always love the Classics version because there is a head where it's part blue and, and part metallic, so that was always kind of cool. Yeah, so he comes with a half metallic head, full metallic head, full He-Man head to fool everybody, uh, orange head. power sword. The He-Man head, the way it looks in this picture, does it mm -hmm. go over something? Does it go over the metallic? Yeah, like I'm sure it does, the hair at least. It almost looks like it's like hollowed out that you can put it right on top of it. And if you look Well, yeah, it, it has to go on the ball joint. But I'm actually, I, I'm thinking it goes on top of the Colossus head. Because the shape of Colossus is... Oh, no, I don't think it went that far. It looks like it's the same shape of his hair. I'm thinking it might go. So, you know, yeah. And then uh, he comes with the original Faker vest or a Skeletor orange vest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never realized that was Skeletor's vest. Yeah. It's a different color. That's very... Pretty much, yeah. And so, hopefully, um, rumor has it, we will see this gentleman in the fall. You gonna get him? Yeah, definitely. It's pretty, it's pretty cool looking. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my He-Man figure. I ordered it from Big Bad Toy Story the other day. They said July was the shipping. So you got uh, it's only the 11th, my friend. So you still got time. No, I, I hate waiting. It might come on the 25th for Christmas in July. Probably. See, I, I would love to get my He-Man before the show. I don't know why. I'm just you know. I'm a yeah. kid like that, but yeah, you want to put your toy next to you when the show starts. Exactly. Yeah. But speaking of Christmas, Hallmark, if you log on to Hallmark.com, you can order a Castle Grayskull tree ornament. All right. You getting it, buddy? Uh, I've been dropping hints. Yeah, you have to get it, Tommy. Yeah. So, but it's here's something I am getting right to go along. What? Isn't the actual final product this is surrendering of what it's going to look like correct okay this yep 1999 apparently they're available now yeah uh, the home star in town um so they have the, they already have their uh, ornaments some of them out i do like to go usually the look because mm -hmm. you'll some sometimes you'll see uh the one year they had peter bankman and I'll drop some hints and i never got it so folks don't take a chance if you want that ornament Right. Yeah, get it when you can. Get it when you can. You see it, buy it. Now, here's something part of my Masters of the Universe breakfast <laughs> Revelation cereal from so, FYI for FYE.com. Yes. Eat this and watch the show just like Saturday morning, and it could be a Tuesday. Yeah, pretty so, much. When it's released. Has it, was there I mean, it looks like Fruity Pebbles. Before? No. Yeah, but like... No, like, they're going all they out. He-Man cereal? No. So this is the first He-Man cereal ever. Ever. At least to my knowledge. I'm right. pretty sure... I'm pretty sure there wasn't. Because I was always... I was always a big... I mean, you can tell from my, you know, girth, but... I, I love cereal. Yeah, I remember C-3PO cereal... That wasn't that very good. G.I. Joe, Ghostbusters. You know what was my favorite cereal? My best one? I hate to, you know, sidetrack. Pac-Man cereal. Pac -Man. I, I don't know what it was, but that was like crack to me. I loved Pac-Man cereal. C-3PO's I didn't like. It was that peanut buttery. Yeah, wasn't a fan. The best. Wasn't a fan. Ghostbusters yeah, was okay. It wasn't so hot. Batman wasn't so hot either. Yeah. Yeah. Although Superman peanut butter, pretty good. It's, I, I think it was just more like we wanted the uh, the S top. The top. So it was like yeah, you just had to have. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that was the whole gimmick. But I'm telling you that Pac Man cereal, you could slap a different label on it. I would. That was good stuff. 
Remember when the cereal boxes came with toys inside the cereal? Oh, yeah. Well, I think there's a battle cat in this one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. A mini battle that's cat. So. Let's see. Uh, Revelations homework. We talked about the comic, the cereal. Thunder Thundercats cool. from Super 7. Apparently, you're going to start shipping. We've been waiting over a year for these guys, at least. I think it's the second wave, or yes. Okay. So, so we although, to... although it, I've been hearing a lot of conflicting stuff that wave three is going to ship before wave two. However, with that being said, both waves should start hitting homes sometime in August. Yeah, it's right around the corner. Right. So, that's pretty cool. I mean. I actually kind of per, almost prefer it. I mean, I hated the long wait because of COVID and New Year's, Chinese New Year's. But I'm going to get like one third completed of my Thundercats collection. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then hopefully, you know, Brian will start saying, hey, you know, we got a Bengali figure for you. So now you can have the whole set and probably the kids. All right. Uh, let's see what yeah. All right, let's can. <laughs> okay, so PulseCon's coming up, and we talked about the convention seasons. They're gearing up, and here are some of the exclusives. This is the um, Trapper Wolf from yeah. the Mandalorian. The Filoni. Yes. Um, Here's him with his helmet and gun. I can't play this. That's awesome that David Filoni gets a figure. Really cool. It's about time. It's, it's, it's really cool. To, it must be really cool to have like an action figure of you. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? Like, they should get a, a John Favreau action figure. Maybe he's next. You know. I mean, oh, duh. I'm a retard. Happy Hogan. That's true. And I didn't mean to use that terminology, retard. I'm only talking about myself. But yeah, Happy Hogan. That's a... Yeah. Uh, and he voiced the uh, guy in Solo. Yes. Um, but still, I mean, like, if, uh, if I was Dave Filoni, I'd have to have one, you know. So Trapper Wolf, twenty six ninety nine, scheduled for fall during Hasbro PulseCon. Very cool. Now here's something interesting. The Cantina Showdown. Yeah. Every movie, every... Western style place has to have a bar fight. And this is Star Wars. And it will include Dr. Evazin, Panda Baba, and Obi Wan Kenobi, the Alec Guinness version. Hello there. Now, here's what's cool about the bar as well right, you, can, you can actually put in more pieces to it to make a bigger bar. Uh. So. And you can have Ben walk in and everybody go, Ben! Fucking cheers instead of Norm. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a great one. That'd be a good skit <laughs> for uh, for Seth Green's comedic Star Wars. So I don't know if we're allowed to say the name. What'd you say? So it looks like Obi-Wan's got um, soft, like cloth, soft goods for his cloak. Yeah. Very nice. You want to um, keep that arm? You burn, get off my cloak. Don't touch me ever. Uh, it should come with like a uh, detachable arm. <laughs> right? Just all bloody. I would like to see because like if you have all three of these guys already, you kind of have it already. But... Now I know they're trying to keep the poise, uh, poise, the <laughs> price point down, mm -hmm. but it would have been cool. To, I mean, I guess you can just add your own Luke. Yeah, how much is this going to be? This is great question, Ian. One hundred and four ninety nine. That's crazy. you're getting three figures, a buildable bar. I I, I kind of feel it's kind of high. I don't know if it's just me or not, but like, it's an ex well, it's an exclusive, and you know, yeah. welcome to the future of toy collecting. I mean, everything's going up. I take out a mortgage just to buy toys. <laughs> Pretty much. I kind of feel that like 75 is the highest this thing should be worth. But hmm. I don't know. That's just me. And I'm sure, you know, there's, I don't even know if I could say I'm sure there's a reason because I just can't imagine 
the a toy. Well, I mean, you have toys that are worth cost more than that, but it's just like, yeah, you know. Anyway, go on. So here's Panda Baba. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In all his glory. Now this looks like a reused body from Luke Skywalker yes, with a with his new head on it. Yeah. It's... And then Doctor Evazin. And did you know Ian until I read the Death Sentence and Twelve Systems? Yeah. Until I read the um the uh what do you call it? The press release. I had no idea he had a name. Oh really? I mean, obviously he had a name. I just didn't know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't even know he was a doctor. Well, wouldn't know how good he is, you know. Now here's Alec Guinness as Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. This is a great looking figure. I like this figure. Yeah. Especially the the likeness. The likeness isn't perfect, but I would always picture an elder Obi Wan Kenobi to look like this. It's got to be old weather, you know, from the sun and the, just the desert life is probably, I'm sure it's a tough life. So, yeah. Pretty much. So, again, only available at Hasbro Pulse. And here's something else cool. I wish they would bring back or at least reissue this in the Black Series again. This is part of the vintage collection, the 3.75 inch figures. Mm-hmm. The Emperor and his throne room. Also with soft goods, it looks like. Yes. There's him with a lightsaber, his pimp stick, <laughs> and on his throne. And we're not talking about the toilet. He's got a nice view, I'll tell you that. Yep. We should throw in some uh, guards right next to him. The Crimson Guards. Yeah, that would be nice. And he will be slated for the fall as well, thirty one ninety nine. And Diamond Select Toys also announced a couple more exclusives. Cobra Kai. Dun dun dun. Now let me ask you this. Yes. So along with you know Daniel Larusso over in. Um, uh, Miyagi Sun Dojo. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a two pack. Don't you think Danielson should have included his daughter? Yes, and I mean, like I said, you know, I, I understand price points because I mean, this is a three pack. The other ones you get. Oh, this is a three pack. Yeah, so Cobra or um, Johnny um, and then and Danielson. Um, no, because you know, and don't forget like, Reese. Oh yeah, I mentioned him. So like, first, like you kind of got like these three main characters, especially Daniel and Johnny, who are like the main. And then you know, Chris is coming coming back and kind of causing hell for everybody. So I think that's a, a good lineup actually. Kind of follows the structure of the show in a way. Gotcha. Which is a great show. I can't wait for the new season to come out. Seventy-five dollars. For all three. There you go. See? And they really love those open boxes because here is the Lord of the Rings, Smeagol. Smeagol. Or Gollum, for those. Or Gollum. That's right. I like that you went with Smeagol because it's very, very accurate. Yep. I'm down with the rings. He will be priced at forty nine ninety nine, and it looks like he comes with an accessory of bones. Yep, I can tell. It's got a and a precious. I know there's got to be a precious somewhere. He likes his precious. Yes, yes, he he wants it. And from one Middle Earth to another Earth character or characters, Bunsen and Beaker two pack. It's, These are awesome if you're a Muppet fan. Yeah, but I, 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 I feel like these Muppet toys just don't sell well. Like they had that line out years ago from Palisades Toys, and they were mm-hmm. really nice figures. They were, yeah. the sculpting, you know, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? How they looked? They looked just like them, and you know, yeah, exactly. The, you know, and these look great too, and you know, 
I think these are battle damage versions. Because if you look closely oh, enough, yeah. So like a Muppet lab. They're, yeah, something exploded. Yeah, like and... um, but they're, you know, like these are great toys. I, I honestly think, though, it's going to be for older older collectors. People are. Meep, meep, meep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a meme out there. I love this thing. When, when I redo my office, I'm going to have motivational posters. There's one of Beaker. It says, I'm, and I'm going to bleep myself. It says, um, everyone can go blank themselves because I'm badass as well. Yeah, that's going right up on my wall. Beaker. You gotta look. Yep. I love Beaker. He's, he's one of the best. $49.99. Again, uh, you can order, pre order them soon at Diamond Select. And then that's not all from Diamond Select. Eric Draven's back. I read something recently. He was somebody had him cast as a Marvel character. Yeah, I mentioned that to you last week. We were, oh, okay. So it was you. Okay. Uh, Shang Chi. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, Brandon Lee was just. I honestly think his career was going to like explode after this movie. Yeah, because he was really talented, not just in obviously in martial arts, but if you watch um, Showdown in Little Tokyo, he he did great humor. Um, he, he could pull off dramatic stuff. I mean, this was going to be his his big breakout performance, and it's so sad about what happened. No. Um, I can't really tell the likeness on the toy right now, the, the angle of the picture, but it looks like the the box is using that. Um, yeah, I don't think you're really supposed to remove the figure. I yeah. think the whole box in the diorama just is perfect the way it is. Yeah, like this, I mean, just put it on a shelf. $39.99. And, this and then for you Disney fans. Because, you know, Disney, they're very weird. They they, they have an, a product that they own. Well, they made this film, for instance, Tron. And I don't know. It didn't I guess it didn't do well in the theaters or as expected or whatever the case may be. And they pretty much forget about it for like 30 years. Yeah. Something like that. And then they're like, yeah, we're going to make a sequel. And when I, I can never sit through Tron. It was only like the past year or two that I finally did. And I was like, yeah, this movie's pretty good. Did you see the sequel? Uh, I did. I did. And I thought they were both good. I thought the first one was way ahead of its time as a film. Right. Um, I, I think the toys look great. You know, I think these are really cool. And I... I can't Seven imagine. inches. Yeah. No, Fully I, articulated. Here's Sark. They are pushing this thing because they're even making the Tron light cycle ride in Disney World. And I can't wait. Wow. To ride that. You know, they have mm -hmm. it in, in um, Hong Kong Disneyland or Shanghai. But um, the thing is, like, wicked looking. I cannot wait till that thing is done. Nice. Right. Here's Flynn. And... Oh, and Tron. Wait. I think I got him. Yep, I got him back. I knew I was going to do that. I got him backwards, folks. So Flynn, seven inches, fully articulated. Tron, seven inches, fully articulated. And Sark. Which is funny. And when you would think Tron, I always thought like Jeff Bridges was Tron until I saw the movie. Right. Because he just is named after, you know, he's a star. He'd be the name, main character names. That. But, so the three pack from Diamond Select, $80. And you can order them all from Gentle Giant Limited, GentleGiantLTD.com. Yeah, I think Tron fans are going to go crazy for these. Definitely. Yeah. All five of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'm, uh, I'm... It, it does have a, a, a cult following. Um, Super cult following, yeah. Same with the Black Hole. That's another Disney film that, like, uh, I don't know what they think they were. I don't know what they were trying to do, but, like, they, it has its following, and they were going to remake that one. And there was another one they were going to redo. And I stumbled on a YouTube uh, show the other day about all the Disney stuff that got canceled or could have been. Yeah. Do you know Emperor's New Clothes or the Emperor's New Groove? Yeah, it's based off the new clothes. Yeah. Right. 
originally it was titled Kingdom of the Sun. And he had a twin brother. They completely reworked. The they scrapped the whole thing. Yeah, it was a great it was a great uh, viewing. Yeah, um you, you could just I'm sure there is a podcast that just covers that. Oh yeah, I'm sure. They those guys. Yeah. yeah. Some more Disney news. What if the trailer just came out? I don't know what if you've seen it. Tell me what if what? What if what if we didn't do this show? I don't know. We wouldn't have a year's worth of episodes. <laughs> Poor attempt of a joke. So what do you think of this? I don't I'm not crazy about the animation. I'm not either. Um I was really disappointed Robert Downey Jr. will not be Iron Man. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I saw the trailer. I watched it last night, and I was like, I don't think that's him. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah, that's on is him. That, um, is it Chris Helm? Chris Helmsworth, that's Thor? Everybody else is in it except for Robert Downey Jr., it seems. Hmm. No. Chadwick Boseman's in it, which it is great. Be, yeah. A very nice send-off. It would be nice to have RDJ back, but... I don't know. It's, yeah, but now, you know, kind of sullied Iron Man for me a little. You know, I mean, be a team player. I mean, you yeah. made a billion dollars, you know. I, I would kind of think he, you know, he, carry, he basically carried that franchise in a way, that whole concept of the Avengers to the end. Right. Why he didn't do this one, I have no idea. But um. So what if his premiering on August 11th, yeah. and I believe the first episode is What's Captain Carter? Uh, Captain Carter. Which is that? a stupid name yeah I, I couldn't well i mean that was just in the trailer i mean maybe they are going to call her like captain britain right that's what i would have thought of yeah and then i guess we we're also going to get our first glimpse at um marvel zombies yep yeah that'll be an interesting episode and spider-man teaming up with dr strange prior to the new movie but if it's a what if episode is it going to just be like a simple one-off what if this actually happened, or is it going to directly tie into the movie? No, I mean, I yeah. don't know, yeah. but I can't I can't imagine, because like, even in the comic book series, it, it like, never really tied in. I think maybe uh, they did a crossover with time, but that's about it. Basically a, a comic, like a one-off each issue, like what if this happened instead? Exactly. Yeah, what if the Spider-Man, um, the Sp what if the spider bit, you know, Aunt May? Nonsense, so. Right, right. Although, if Disney was smart, they'd hire Jim Valentino right now to write some episodes. His "What If" issues, comic-wise, are some of the best written comics ever. One of my favorite "What Ifs" is "What If Tony Stark Lost the Armor Wars." Great one. What other episodes did he write? Oh my god, he wrote a whole bunch. Um. Damn, there are too many. Uh, or, well, here's another one. What if the Fantastic Four had all the same powers when they crash landed? Hmm. That was a very good one because uh, when there's a, a section of the story where everybody turns into the thing, and Sue Storm turns into well, like they didn't refer to her as the Man Thing, but that's what she looked like, hmm. and it was so creepy. Like he drew. He drew a panel of you know her standing there, but she was lifeless. Mm -hmm. Like I, it wasn't clear entirely if she actually died and just inhabited that body, mm -hmm. but it, it was it was so creepy. There was even um, uh, uh, not a word balloon, but um, a caption that said, you know, if you look deep into her eyes, you don't see life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jim Valentino and What If, That's that was a really great combination. So hopefully Disney will pull him out of retirement. Kind of looks like they're going along with stuff based off the MCU instead of right. possibly based off some of the, the comics, which I kind of wish they would do both. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Well, they I mean, kind of are in a way. I mean, we never really saw Marvel zombies in the MCU. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, like more uh, more of the actual what if comic books. Like I, there was one like what if um Uncle I don't know, what, is it? what if I don't know Uncle Ben didn't die or dead. Yeah, they I'm sure they've done that. Yeah, 
I mean, what if it was a really great series, but it kept getting canceled for some reason. Yeah. So August 11th on Disney Plus. And now let's go down to Super 7 where they got the Run DMC crew. Yeah. That's me trying to be ghetto. So the reaction series will include Daryl DMC McDaniel, Jason Jam Master J Mitzel, and Joseph Run Simmons. And you can purchase them all now at super7.com. Now, the only thing I want to see with this is an additional um, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry with <laughs> for their Walk This Way team up. That was, it was a great, you know, duo they did, this great combination. Um, and McDaniel's really into comics too. I think he made one. Really? Mm hmm. Cool. Run DMC. That makes, brings you back to the 80s, Tommy. And from the 80s to the future. Whoa. Nice segue. With the Star Trek. Next generation reaction figures. Bring in Picard, Worf, Data, Guinan. That does not look anything like Whoopi Goldberg. Wesley Crusher and a Borg. Shut up, Wesley. Isn't that one of the episodes he tells him to shut up? Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if I know that, I, <laughs> I know nothing about Star Trek. These look like um, a little bit. There was, I think, when the next generation first came out. I remember, my sister had bought two of the action figures. It was Data from Palisades or no, Playmates. Whoever made the first toys. All right, I think you were playing. Well, if they you look just like this, basically. Right, but if they you like go back, the then they were Mego, and then I think Playmates had the second line. Whoever made the ones with like the phasers built into their hand. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But uh, that's what they kind of remind me of. Nice. So more toys for Trekkies. More toys is always good. Yeah, it's got to be tough to keep up, though. If you're, yeah. you know, again, do you just cherry pick or, you know, yeah. you get six figures? So. So from Mexico, from the MDS line, is Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Fifty dollars will ship in January between January and March of twenty twenty two. Are you a fan of that movie? I've seen it. I'm not a big horror guy. Yeah. That, Includes that, removable that. chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the original, and then I remember seeing the sequel. Yeah, the chili scene. In oh no, was it? no not the sequel. I'm sorry, the reboot. My friend Billy took us all out. Because he's a, he's a big chainsaw guy, he took us out to the city and by city New York. Mm-hmm. We went. It was this rickety old, like practically abandoned movie theater. It went down into the basement, and literally, it was the size of a living room, with one wall just being the whole screen. I, I kept making jokes to everybody. I made I made some girl laugh. I was like, "Where's the remote control? Who's got the remote?" And you know, she started. La- everybody started laughing. I'd be more worried about like being like locked in there and, and dying. To be honest, it sounds like one of those. It was stuff. a regular door when we went in. Only in the city. And we were like, "Yeah, indie film, yeah." So Leatherface, you can purchase him from Mesco Toys right now. You know what's funny about these 80s 50 movies, bucks. Horror, like especially early 80s, well, 70s horror movies, is that you kind of, most fan, most, if you're a fan of the horror movies from the 80s, you're pretty much a fan of all of them. But right. I think you kind of have a favorite to see the Leatherface or Jason or Freddy. And it's always interesting to hear which one somebody likes. You know. Their favorite. Well, besides Scream, the only one I liked was Jason versus Freddy. Now, Scream was a good movie, and the sequels... You know. Now, I know, yeah, that's that's a point of contention with me, because some people don't consider them horror movies, per se. And, I, and yeah, I agree with that. Why not? Oh, because it's mostly like a study of horror movies. But, like, you yeah. don't... I mean, you have a weird villain, you know, and then at the end we find out who they are. Right. It, you I, know, so... I actually think the first one was very intelligently done um, right 
needed a thesaurus for some of the words, but you know, I felt like they took the whole horror genre and like I said, pointed things out as a study of within a horror movie. Right. So it's almost like maybe well, fourth wall in a way, but it was actually pretty clever. I, I think when they went into the se- the sequels is kind of when they lost it. But, you know, script wise, Kevin Williams liked was it. great. Um, yeah. Wes Craven, you know, of course, is great. But, um, you know, to each his own. So Boss Fight Studios for their Popeye line pre-order opens on this Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, which will be uh, July 13th. Get your Popeye. I like how the lid of the spinach can is a little bit rougher on the edges. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so well, he had to put some strength in there. Yeah. How did he have the strength to crush that can before he had to spin it? <laughs> Popeye, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at his arms. Maybe that's why. But like, yeah, I have a catch twenty-two there, Popeye. Yeah, he works out. Uh, now, in some of the shows, his shirt is blue. Yes, and in some of them, it's black. I guess Correct. even with Olive's dress, he even has a um a white version. A white, but yeah, it's true. No, was there really a reason, or was it just because you know the, the everybody changes black- clothes? The, their black and white started out as black and white cartoons and eventually became color and so yep. on and so forth. Yep. And did you know, here's some Popeye history. Please. First 3D like animation was created for on the Popeye show really? when Fleischer took over it. Right. You know how like you could walk in a scene and like a tree could be in front of you mm-hmm. or like the background starts moving. Mm-hmm. First time done on a animated Popeye show. From Fleischer. Fleischer, though. They did Superman as well. Yeah. Yeah, they did a lot of good stuff, Fleischer. Yeah, based out of my Huge head. Fleischer. Back yeah. In day, back in the you know, 30s. Yeah. And now, unfortunately, some sad news. Richard Donner, director supreme. I mean, the man did Superman. He's done... Goonies. Goonies. Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. You know, he was... Uh, him and his wife were producers on uh, yeah. the X Men films. Uh, just extremely talented director. Yeah, passed away at ninety one. Ninety one, yeah. He, he um, Jeff Johns, is uh, was his assistant. Wow, can you imagine that the stories he must have? Oh my god, incredible! The greatest thing I remember seeing him talk about Superman, um, Donner, and he was like, they were talking about the helicopter. And originally it was just going to be, um, he's, he's going to fly and catch Lois. And they were like, we got to make it more like, you know, like, um, edge of the seat. They were like, let's just drop the helicopter. So it almost wasn't originally part of the idea. So they dropped the helicopter and he catches that as well. And I, I love that scene. It is so great. Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely a visionary even back then. Yeah, and I know, like, you know, in Superman 2, the, there's a Donner cut. Um, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. I, Something. The only thing I didn't agree with was, uh, spoilers, if you haven't seen it, Superman blows up the Fortress of Solitude for some reason. Yeah, I was, I'm not a fan of Superman 2, or I haven't really seen the Donner cut or all of it. Um, but the first one... The exception that is just dated in look of the clothing, um, it, it's a great movie. Yeah, it still holds up. Oh yeah, story wise, it's excellent. You know, he really went out of his way to, you know, make you believe that this man could fly. And there are some scenes that are, they really look great flying scenes. And there's some scenes that are obviously, you know, they don't hold up. But um, it looks great. You know, it's a great movie. Yeah, rest in peace to the great Richard Donner. And now we've been teasing you long enough. That we know this is the only reason why you tuned in. You so hour, we, are, minutes. we are doing a Cyber Frog contest. That's right. You out there, dear listener, can get your own Ethan Van Skyver signed Cyber Frog action figure. So I'm going to run his commercial and we'll have some fun.
When the monster you created comes back. You mind if I tell you about my toys? I love this toy. The modern cyber frog action figure. This is the jewel protector of earth. That is our cyber frog. Look at him. I love this toy. He has it within himself to turn back the Vespas, undoing the damage, the poisonous colonization of the Vespas. You can see that we've used this nice, super shiny chromium paint. You are going to love your Cyberfrog toy. The toes all bend like this, super flexible foot. And with rockers. Ankle rocker so that the foot can go back and forth. We did that as well. We added the ankle rocker. This is all of the articulation that's available for this toy. Now, if we get to $400,000, this is what you're getting. We've set this campaign up with stretch gold, a nice honeycomb stand display with articulated arm. So this will get included with your toy. At $450,000, all of the toys get one. At $500,000, we're gonna give your frog a total of three sets of hands. We've got them sculpted here, ripping hands, and then he's got fists as well. Of course, there's also the additional chicken fist, uh, which those people who signed up for the early email notifications list will be receiving. $600,000, I love this. We're, let's give your frog an extra swap out head with a toothy grimace. 700,000, this we have to get to. Let's give your frog a nasty bee stung swap out head. Ouch, anyone have a bandaid? Look at the stinger right through the bottom part of his jaw. That's There's cool. And by the way, these toys, we're going to put them through a process so that they're going to be okay for your kid. They're going to be rated for 14 and up. If you've got an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, we're going to make sure that these toys are okay for them. So at 800,000, and this is as far as we've gotten, 800,000, let's give your frog some firepower. If you remember Blood Honey, Cyber Frog hooks up with uh, Chelsin. She rapid evolves him just to show him a sample of his capabilities and he grows a gigantic arm cannon. Uh, we've made that cannon. We've made that arm cannon as an accessory, uh, and you will get that added to your package if we get to 800,000 for Cyberfrog. Amazing, amazing. So that was awesome. So here are the rules for the contest. I have to see this. Okay, so contest rules, no purchase necessary to enter. Contest is open to all residents of the continental 48 states. No territories, sorry, Alaska, no Hawaii or Puerto Rico. Contest is open to 18 years or older. For full terms and rules, log on to toy-lines.com. Now, here's how you do it. We're going to send out a tweet in a few minutes. All I want you to do, share that retweet. Give it to your friends. Have them share it with their friends, vice versa. Whatever it needs to get done, we need to get the line exposed. He's only he's at 60% right now. I want that firepower stuff. So you must retweet the CyberFrog tweet. That's that Toy Lines puts out that states this is the contest tweet. It'll probably include a link on India for the Indiegogo campaign. Winners will be chosen at random, or winner will be chosen at random and at the discretion of Toy Lines Podcast Productions. Contest begins today and will end on July 31st at midnight. One winner will receive a Cyber Frog figure signed by Ethan Van Skyver. All you have to do is spread the word, folks. Just hit that retweet button, let everybody know, and hopefully we can get this funded. And you're also helping independent creators live out their dreams. Everybody wants to help everybody out, and you get a cool toy in, in the process. So go on Twitter, wait for that Toy Lines tweet. Probably be the biggest retweet campaign we've ever had. So, so yeah, so... And, however, if you're inclined not to participate, you can also get these figures, these wonderful figures, just by logging in onto Indiegogo. Just look for Cyberfrog action figures. So that about does it for the Toy Lines podcast. For this week. Yep. I want to thank Brian Salvatore for our intro and outro music. Um... Join us. Be a part of the conversation. Find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Toy Lines. 
collector hashtag collectors helping collectors. If there's something you're looking for or something you're selling, help each other out. Let's beat those scammers. Special thanks to Scott Nightlick over at Spectre Creative. We are now on YouTube, as as you know. Please tell a friend, ring that bell. Thank you to our new followers, Hatch four five zero SX. We are on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Please subscribe, give us a rating, or do both. For all the latest toy news and reviews, log on to www.toy-lines.com. And also, if you love Disney, and I know some of you do, check out our latest... Check out our latest podcast, Rocketeer Radio, hosted by the man himself, Ian Westhoff. Thank you, sir. Uh, Look look forward um, to season two. Season one. Oh, season two. And season two will be coming soon. Um, And for daily, most likely daily, Rocketeer, just stuff, on uh, check out Rocketeer Radio Instagram. We do have a Twitter account. It does get updated not as much though as um, Instagram. So check out the Instagram site if you would like to see more of the Rocketeer comic book or movie. Nice. And thank you. Rocketeer Radio on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Right. And if you're inclined to do so, please do. If you're a He Man fan, please give us a chance at People of Eternia. We're interviewing past, present creators and the weekend of the 23rd when Revelations comes out. Scott and I and I will be hosting a special People of Eternia live show to discuss all first uh, part one, five episodes. For anybody who knows somebody, um, your girlfriend or your boyfriend who's a huge He-Man fan, and you're not, this is a great show to listen to, get some information, and while them over dinner or on a date. Yeah, especially trivia if you're interested in some Facts. inside He-Man stuff, this is the place to go to. This is the place. <laughs> so, thank you to everybody, new, past, old listeners. Thank you for one year. Hopefully, we'll do this for another year. Ian, you're the best. Thanks, sir. Play with your toys. Good luck with the contest. <laughs>